Well, here is the Jaguar. It is a 1967 2.4 automatic. The bodywork is in fair condition. There are probably four areas of rust which will need attention and we will get to those in a little while. Um, the chrome seems to be in remarkably good condition so that may end up on my car. <laughs> um, that says it was last on the road in 1978 I believe been off the road a long time. Looks like people have started to do things and stopped and started and stopped. The paintwork obviously is shot so that's not a concern. The bonnet does have a huge dent in it which will need to be addressed and also the right hand side front wing has a dent on the top which will also need to be addressed. As you can see it's a steel wheel model. Um, under here, it's uh, it's it's surface. There's surface rust, of course, but generally speaking, it's in pretty good condition. And a good blast and a coat of underseal will be fine under there. As I said, you can see the chrome's in good condition. The door gaps are pretty good. All the chrome appears to be present, except for the piece around the rear window that's gone walkabout. Um, not keen on the uh, exhaust pipe down there. Looks like the car was originally silver with a blue interior and uh, just as a side note the interior is not leather. This was uh, the last year of the uh, thick bumper model and uh, the introduction of the slim bumper model and the interiors they cheaped out. Um, they're plastic basically or vinyl. Again under here this wheel arch you can see that there is uh, surface dust mainly dust and rust um, I was surprised to see that the um, wheel covers were okay again this is mud surface rust again nothing serious but there is a serious piece that you may just have caught a glimpse of then but that is um, something I'll show you in a, in a, in a little while when uh, the owner of the vehicle comes out this is something I did before he came out. Crawled about on my belly. Now I could edit out all this other stuff, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered. So it's just, you'll have to walk along with me. Uh, again, in the front wheel arch here, everything seems to be okay. All surface rust, nothing serious here. Again, front bumper, chrome's good. Now, the front cross member was a, an area where you, you know, have concern. And it seems to be pretty good. There's a few little marks on it. Uh, suspension, of course, would need rebuilding, but uh, it'll function for the moment, I'm sure. Plate missing there. Nah, no big deal. Um, obviously, those uh, subframe mounts are shot, so I would replace those uh, before driving it on the road, because otherwise you could find yourself leaving things behind. Um, at this point the owner, I've knocked on the door and the owner has come out and he's telling me various things about it. Uh, and if I remember them I'll tell you what they are. Um, but you can see he started to do stuff and, and he's selling it so I'm not quite sure why he did that. I mean he's replaced the top hose there, he's cleaned and painted the air box. Um, I don't know if he's put a new filter in it, I didn't ask. Uh, he did say he couldn't get the wires to the starter motor. Um, but, uh, you know... Um, he doesn't have a ramp. I do. Uh, although this wouldn't be going on my ramp straight away. This would have to sit uh, aside of that because I've got my Mark II to deal with. Oh, my other Mark II. How depends how you want to word it. Um, that's where the dent is, where that uh, big rust patch is, the, or surface rust patch. Um, looks like someone's lent on it or dropped something on it. Um, the dent on the bonnet uh, that was caused by a clown who uh, broke the cable trying to open the bonnet and then tried to pry it open rather than um, 
reaching through with a coat hanger and unhooking it. This is where the uh, the current owner says, oh, I just need the front harness, you know, the, the engine bay harness. And I was explaining to him that it isn't just an engine bay harness. It goes all the way inside the car. And uh, you know, it's not a, a cheap item. Um, maybe the harness that's there could be repaired, although that's not something I'd like to do. But maybe just as a um, safety measure, um, for the time being until the harness is replaced with a brand new one um, it might be worth just taking all the casing off of it and uh, making sure everything's okay in there we will see uh, there are no lenses on the lights that's something I have spare The front door there, there's a little bit of rot on the bottom that would have to be dealt with. Uh, he's actually showing me a box at this point um, that he thinks was a radio booster. Uh, and I thought it, it may have been that or it may have been a polarity switcher. And they wired it wrong because that is what caused the fire underneath the bonnet. Um, fortunately it doesn't seem to have damaged too much it did the HT leads in and a couple of other items but uh, I mean the harness is there and probably most of it is uh, functional um, you can see there's an old coil there that would be replaced it's an old vintage coil somebody might like it as a uh, an ornament um, it also appears that on the uh, side where the fuse box is there should be a washer bottle that is missing and it looks like they put some kind of bespoke um, washer pump and screwed it to the fuse box for some reason. No accounting for what some people do, but that's that would have to be um, replaced because there is no washer bottle in this one. You might need it at some point, who knows. Now it should be noted that uh, this is a positive earth, although he's uh, got himself some... Um, red wires that he's put onto the starter terminal solenoid um, that's the wrong color really and that is something I would have to double check but I'm pretty sure these are still positive earth at this time and that that door opens and shuts beautifully considering the seals are totally fucked this is the disaster there is a large hole underneath the rear seat um, but you can get the panel for that. So it's only half of it, it seems. Um, but that's something that uh, if we just used it to run about on the road initially as in its current state, then uh, I would just patch it until such time it's restored properly. I think in, in my mind, and I, I obviously is something I will discuss with my brother, is that maybe we should just get this thing going um, that 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 will be a good idea let's just get it safe and get it going and, and have a bit of fun with it um, and then whenever he comes to uh, to visit which he does about once a year which is great um, although this may tempt him to come more than once a year who knows uh, there, there's a there's rust there as well so again that would just be putting in another patch and obviously all around the seams there um, it would be a matter of rust treating it to prevent it going any further oh and any guys um, any of you out there um, rust treatments um, what have you used and what have you found successful um, is the poor 15 one any good and yes I know I recently lambasted uh, poor 15 for their crappy gas tank sealant but maybe their rust converter is good <laughs> ironically he has four wire wheels uh, in the house and a wire wheel there in the spare but this car has steel wheels so um, I don't think I'd change it in all honesty I think I would leave the steel wheels I would uh, clean them up maybe get them powder coated um, actually I could probably powder coat those myself and then I could choose whatever colour I like now this is the other uh, there's a piece of piece of there's a bit of rust in the passenger foot, a 
driver footwell um, which I will try and show sort of around the gas pedal area there and the, on the tow board and one question he did ask me why is there two arms on the brake pedal I said well there always has been on the automatic on these uh, he said oh so it's the same pedal box that you would use for a, a clutch and I thought uh, probably is but I'd never actually considered that there you may or may not be able to see that the um, bonnet is um, bent where the Jaguar Leaper is this all of here I mean it's yeah the paintwork's totally shit so you can't do any harm and obviously all the rubbers are, are completely shit as well they're gone um, one second now as for the interior it's suffered the Arizona heat the wood all needs re-veneering some of it may even need replacing um, the substrate has probably had it um, but again you can still see that the chrome's good yeah and there's you know surface rust there I think that would probably be one of the first things we should do would be to treat the rust just to stop it getting any worse than it is and then we can deal with it properly later this will not be uh, a conker's car but yeah, you can you see all the door panels yes door panels um, and the back seat there has suffered the where the rear window leaked water and then baked and burnt in the sun um, and as I said it's a vinyl interior headlining of course is gone that's you know that's to be expected but all the rods are still there so all you got to do is buy a new headlining or find a local upholsterer to make one and you know that might just be a nice aesthetic thing to do um, should we go ahead with this and and that is just a thought at the moment um, as soon as I've finished editing this video uh, I will be calling my brother and sending it to him so that he can have a look at it and see what he thinks um, he's the one that's going to put his hand in his pocket and uh, pay for this little baby um, my wife said to me well you, if you said it was okay do you think he would go for it and I said uh, absolutely but I want his opinion he is the one that is putting up the money I'll be doing the work and when he's here which is in February he'll be doing some work on it too uh, that I'm sure because he won't be able to stop himself um, maybe as if we're going to be doing this together again hopefully um, if, if we go for it um, maybe he'll take some things back with him you know I don't know to carburetors uh, heater box you know anything really anything that uh, he can take with him and bring back would be great now this is important I want to see this plate uh, okay hang on a second okay I'm just trying to see the uh, the body number the car number there okay I'm gonna have to pause the video when I'm uh, watching this just to get that number and uh, see what Mr. Jaguar says about it notice too there that was a, another crisp wire <laughs> but I think the the fire wasn't too severe I mean the the, the fan belt it survived it seems um, lots of bits of wiring survived that paintwork's amazing it's all crazed and cracked actually that would be perhaps quite fun stripping that off and um, putting something on it don't know what yet maybe do a panel at a time just for fun or maybe just leave it for fun uh, yeah it needs new uh, HT leads and that's okay I've got a complete set so that's not going to cost me a dime uh, yeah if that could I don't know if I might see this blob here that's that's a windscreen um, washer pump that burnt so that burnt the rest of the wiring here didn't seem bad uh, a couple of burnt wires over here um, just underneath the uh, the heater box but it doesn't seem to have affected the harnesses on the side but I bet if I thoroughly inspect it um, I'll find some I mean I, I was trying not to go too crazy 
because of this uh, gentleman being there and I could see a couple of places unfortunately it's not in camera shot at the moment but the wiring harness there by the fuse box had a couple of uh, areas that I was concerned about that will have to be dealt with but the fire couldn't have been that bad because the lead didn't melt <laughs> it's still on an, a generator um, again that's something I can take off and rebuild Um, let's see what else have we got we're looking at here oh yes he was pointing out about the um, he couldn't get the wire onto the start of it minor detail we'll we'll deal with that um, I mean it's it's strange it's, it's lots of clean bits it, I guess he's had a little tinker and some of the questions he came up with I must admit I, I had not um, thought about now this is the transmission fluid what a long dipstick that is and look at that cherry red so it looks like the transmission fluid is has been recently done or maybe it was done and then never run who knows we'll, we'll find out um, and if so there's there's a couple of things one that maybe somebody else can tell me the Jaguar badge on the front above the grill now originally they had you know 2.4 Jaguar 3.4 Jaguar 3.8 Jaguar this one has nothing it just has the uh, the growler and that's it very strange oh this was he pulled out the dipstick to show me that the engine oil was uh, was okay and it was actually it was surprisingly good um, he had also freed up that vent he was very proud of the fact that he'd uh, freed up the um, the air vent and um, I must admit he did a cracking job on that um, he, he was a really nice guy he really was and spent a long time chatting to him probably a couple of hours um, he would ask me a lot of questions about this car um, and, and not about this particular car but this model because I have one and oh, I'm not an expert but I do have a lot of knowledge so we, we spent a long time doing that and chatting over that Now, unfortunately it has an antenna which I don't like or aerial in the wing but it's not rusty so you know if we kept it I'd just uh, replace the area with a, a decent one now we're just BSing so I'll keep quiet for a second until there's something more important to say and I'll let you just look at the picture bit of a dent there in the radiator that will have to be uh, dealt with I'd probably clean that paint out of that channel there because there are drain channels there yeah that right there <laughs> there also should be a number there and I, I didn't um, remove the paint to find it which I should have done it's amazing of course when you think about things too late which I did however it doesn't matter but again again <laughs> It was uh, just over an hour's drive to get to this from my house. I'm just holding the light there so we can get the dipstick back in. okay he just knocked a cap off there I wanted to retrieve it but what do you think guys and girls should we buy this I believe I mentioned earlier that uh, this is obviously in Arizona now and it was uh, has been in Arizona at least since uh, 1978 if not before um, and prior to that there was a sticker on it that said Panama don't know about the weather in Panama but I certainly don't think they have um, snow 
which means this car has basically basically yuck, this car has lived in good weather for its life um, I'm not sure when it came to Arizona if it was originally in Panama I will try and find that out um, it is interesting to note that the speedometer is in kilometers not miles so definitely an export model definitely went to a foreign country first and that foreign country could be Panama I don't know if they use kilometers there kilometers um, so that's another uh, thing for me to do some quick checking on uh, it's it's not something that's important but it's certainly something that's very interesting also I was just pointing it out there to the owner and unfortunately I don't have it in uh, film is the um, there there should be a red tail tail there now this is a 1967 mark II. maybe at that point they didn't put those tail tails in there I don't know it could be that somebody's filled in the holes you know that Obviously, going back to bare metal would be the only way to prove that. But there's a couple of little things like that on this uh, car that makes me think it was a bit of a special export. Or maybe that's how they did it. You know, as I said, a kilometre per hour speedo. Uh, no little telltales there. Uh, Panama badge on the back. Ah... Uh, what else? Oh yeah, that, now there is another switch on the dashboard and I think it says intermediate. Now bear in mind this is an automatic so I'm not quite sure um, what it's for. I've never owned an automatic one of these. In fact I've never known one until this one and it's very um, strange and I he asked me, you know, is that a, an overdrive switch or is it a, a like a cruise control switch? And in chatting with him, we said, well, it's probably a, like a cruise control. But of course, normally with cruise control, when you hit the brake pedal, the cruise comes off. So the only thing I could assume is maybe that switch only engages in fourth or third, depending on what speed of box it is. Um... And when you get up to there, it kicks in and drops out. Who knows? I sure as hell don't. Okay, we're now just standing BSing. So uh, once again, I'll be quiet while you just uh, look at the car. Well, folks, uh, we're getting very, very close to the end of this video now. So what do you think? What do you think? Should we jump? Or should we walk away? Yeah. I think I know what I want to do. But, as I said, this is... Uh, well, it's a joint decision between me and my brother. We've done it before. We did it with the E-Type. Maybe we're going to do it with this, but uh, I shall hopefully have more of a financial uh, investment in it. Whereas with the E-Type, my brother paid for everything. And I just did the work. And then, since it's been here in America, it's been done again. <laughs> And I really didn't do much, unfortunately, because we now live, uh, I don't know, Delaware to uh, Arizona. What is that? Two, three thousand miles apart. Very hard to do things from that distance. My arms aren't that long. And obviously we ship stuff to and from that I do, I do work on. 
But it was minimal this time, which was a shame, but hey, it is what it is. So I don't claim to be a 50% owner of the E-Type, although we do share it. If it was ever sold, it would be unfair of me to take 50%. Besides, I probably couldn't prize it out of my brother's hands. He has a grip like a crocodile, or whatever animal it is that locks its jaws onto money and won't let go. <laughs> Besides, I like to take the piss out of my brother, as he likes to do the same to me. Yeah. I'm going to leave the commentary there, and no more chatting. So, if you enjoy this, this is going to be... Well, this is not a barn find, but it's certainly something close to a barn find. And I will, if we buy it... I will be doing work on this on my channel and depending on the interest um, if you you know people get really interested I'll do lots more videos on it we will just have to see how how things go um, and move forward or backwards from there I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please do tell your friends like comment subscribe and ding that dong Oh, hang on a second. We're getting some du dual audio here. Let me uh, pause it. Okay, he just knocked a cap off there. I wanted to retrieve it. But. What do you think, guys and girls? Should we buy this? I believe I mentioned earlier that uh, this is obviously in Arizona now, and it was uh, has been in Arizona at least since uh, 1978, if not before. Um, and prior to that, there was a sticker on it that said Panama. Don't know about the weather in Panama, but I certainly don't think they have um, snow. Which means this car has basically, basically, yuck, this car has lived in good weather for its life. Um, I'm not sure when it came to Arizona, if it was originally in Panama. I will try and find that out. Um, it is interesting to note that the speedometer is in kilometres, not miles. So definitely an export model. Definitely went to a foreign country first. And that foreign country could be Panama. I don't know if they use kilometres there. Kilometres. Um, so that's another uh, thing for me to do some quick checking on. Uh, it's it's not something that's important, but it's certainly something that's very interesting. Also, I was just pointing it out there to the owner, and unfortunately I don't have it in uh, film. Is the um, there? There should be a red tail tail there. Now this is a 1967 Mark II. Maybe at that point they didn't put those tail tails in there. I don't know. It could be that somebody's filled in the holes. You know that. Obviously, going back to bare metal would be the only way to prove that. But there's a couple of little things like that on this uh, car that makes me think it was a bit of a special export. Or maybe that's how they did it. You know, as I said, a kilometre per hour speedo. Uh, no little telltales there. Uh, Panama badge on the back. Ah... Uh, what else? Is, oh, yeah, that, now there is another switch on the dashboard. And I think it says intermediate. Now, bear in mind, this is an automatic. So I'm not quite sure um, what it's for. I have never owned an automatic one of these. In fact, I've never known one until this one. 
and it's very um, strange. And I, he asked me, you know, is that a, an overdrive switch or is it a, a like a cruise control switch? And in chatting with him, we said, well, it's probably a, like a cruise control. But of course, normally with cruise control, when you hit the brake pedal, the cruise comes off. So the only thing I could assume is maybe that switch only engages in fourth or third, depending on what speed of box it is. Um, and when you get up to there, it kicks in and drops out. Who knows? I sure as hell don't. Okay, we're now just standing BSing, so uh, once again I'll be quiet while you just uh, look at the car. Well, folks, uh, we're getting very, very close to the end of this video now. So what do you think? What do you think? Should we jump? Or should we walk away? Yeah. I think I know what I want to do. But, as I said, this is... Uh, well, it's a joint decision between me and my brother. We've done it before, we did it with the E-Type. Maybe we're going to do it with this, but uh, I shall hopefully have more of a financial uh, investment in it. Whereas with the E-Type, my brother paid for everything. And I just did the work. And then, since it's been here in America, it's been done again. <laughs> And I really didn't do much, unfortunately, because we now live, uh, I don't know, Delaware to uh, Arizona. What is that? Two, three thousand miles apart. Very hard to do things from that distance. My arms aren't that long. And obviously we ship stuff to and from that I do, I do work on. But it was minimal this time, which was a shame. But hey, it is what it is. So I don't claim to be a 50% owner of the E-Type, although we do share it. If it was ever sold, it would be unfair of me to take 50%. Besides, I probably couldn't prize it out of my brother's hands. He has a grip like a crocodile, or whatever animal it is that locks its jaws onto money and won't let go. <laughs> Besides, I like to take the piss out of my brother, as he likes to do the same to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave the commentary there, and no more chatting. So, if you enjoy this, this is going to be... Well, this is not a barn find, but it's certainly something close to a barn find. And I will, if we buy it... I will be doing work on this on my channel and depending on the interest um, if you you know people get really interested I'll do lots more videos on it we will just have to see how how things go um, and move forward or backwards from there I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please do tell your friends like comment subscribe and ding that dong <laughs>